All right. We're just three horse dudes ready to preview two races at Saratoga on Saturday. I'm Greg De Palma. Thanks for tuning in to Horsepower PSN. And joining me, of course, every week, or at least mostly every week. And by the way, since we were off last week, uh, we are going to provide bonus races next week. Because next week's going to be a huge week, boys. As I introduce John Hardoon from the Raggers and Sheets and Chad Summers, third red trainer. Because uh, that's Travers week. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> one of us is excited. You can tell we're half asleep, but that's fine. Yeah, it's been for hours, but the rest of us are here for sleep. Yeah, we, we normally, we usually record this on uh, Thursdays, but uh, Thursday afternoons, but it's Friday, early morning. So uh, we weren't able to get it in yesterday, but we are able to get the show in, and that's all that matters. Okay, so uh, we've been skipping this the last few weeks, so I can't keep skipping it. I want to make sure that we uh, kind of catch up. Last, we, missed, we missed one week, not the last No, 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 we're, we're skipping the uh, interaction with our viewers so uh, we have some uh, viewer comments and uh, questions here to go over. So uh, let's uh, date all the way back three weeks ago to Cesar Alvarez, who said, Great show, fellas. Appreciate John and Chad's opinions and views. Chad, any horses we should keep an eye on out for the remaining of the year? Two-year, three-year-olds. I remember General Jim was mentioned last year by Chad. Keep up the great work. Jim a lot of money. Um... Let me see. I mean, the Bob Baffert team is high on the Aiden that won last week on last Saturday, first time out. He'd be an interesting one. What was that one? You got chopped up a little bit there, Chad? The Bob Baffert horse that won last Saturday, the maiden race. Do you know which one that was, John? What ha What happened? I'm sorry. I didn't hear him. The Bob Baffert horse from last week. Which one, Chad, again? Because you were chopped up a little bit. That's their uh, their favorite one right now. Oh, the one they paid one uh, two point four or something like that. The Zendan horse. Yeah. Yeah. Zen no, this was a Pegram horse. This was a Pegram. Oh, horse. it was a Pegram horse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, not the Chad Brown did the other day. The chance, you know, Stepper McRae or whatever his name was, the McKenzie. You might have to adjust so, your uh, camera there a little bit because the sound is just way too choppy. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm right. All right. If you can hear him, I'm up. Oh. Chad just disappeared. I guess he's coming back in, and that means I've got to restart Chad again. Uh, anyway, uh, while I restart Chad again, uh, some, so let's take a look at some more. Uh, let's see. This uh, I think this might have been from last week. Let's see. Oh, that's right. This is one. I this you can answer this, John. This is from uh, Salcus. I M A N O sixty nine twelve. Everyone says post time cannot get two turns. I guess this was I forget if this was the Saratoga race we were talking about. Remember I, I sent this over to you guys. Then why would connections put him there? Do you remember that one? Yeah, because yeah. it's a graded stake race, and if the horse happens to run and hit the board, the value goes way up. That's probably why they ran there. Okay. He ran. He ran well. He did and, run well. I think he finished third or fourth. Actually, he finished. He finished third. Or, you know, I mean, look, he, he's he's fine. He he runs his race every time. He shows up. Uh, it never looks like a winner, but he, he keeps picking up checks, and uh, and the connections are proud of him, and that's all that matters. You know, I would imagine he, he probably cuts back in distance to the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. I don't think he really wants to go. I, I don't think he really wanted to go a mile and eighth. I don't think he wants to go a mile and a quarter, he, even though he ran well enough. I mean, Arthur's ride. It was kind of a no doubt about it winner. You know, it was, you know, we weren't on the show last week, so it was another win given out on the show by us, um, picking Arthur's ride on top. But at, at the end of the day, he looked much the best. And post time, you know, picked up a check, and that's great, and it's a big purse. Um, but I don't think he's going to reverse form at any time and, and, and defeat Arthur's ride if they were to face each other again. Pat Palazzo, 3268. Great show, guys. Appreciate it, Pat. Horse racing tip, 616. I've never heard Chad complain about CAWs. Why is Chad blaming horse players for prop wagering? That's the Racetracks I, Gaming Commission. Horse players can't implement it. I never blamed the horse players. Chad, Chad never blamed horse players for it, never. So I don't know where that's coming from. That's wrong. There you go. So... 
I mean, I look, I, I very much feel like this industry um, is run by two things. It's, I mean, look, obviously the horses for me are most important, uh, but I know the economics of it all, and it's run by the gambling, and it's run by the owners. And I feel like both of them are not treated properly in racetracks around America. And it's going to be our downfall if we don't fix this anytime soon. It doesn't look like we're going to. So, um, you know, people are pounding their chest saying how great the track's going to be at Pimlico and how great the track's going to be at Belmont. And I think they're alienating their, their main fan base. And I think they're getting away from all the things that are important. So, you know, I, I, it's just it's it, there's there's just a lack of creativity involved in this industry right now. And it's not you know, from the horse player's fault. The horse players want to gamble on the product. You've got to put out the product that makes it worth gambling on. That's all. I mean, every week, it, it, it shouldn't be that every week we're struggling to find two races to do on a Saturday because the fields are so small. Right, Tom? Yeah, absolutely. You're right. I mean, that plays a big part in it. I mean, the, the, I mean, it, the, 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 the horse players have come out and said by their handle, they don't like small fields and they don't like synthetic. And so what do we do? We give them more small fields and we get more synthetic. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just right. kind of the, the way it goes. Yeah, that was uh, that was crazy last week. Uh, all of the Well, again, the weather had to play last week. That definitely came into play and that sucked. Uh, having... no, but at the, at, the same t- at the same time, you have uh, four races for three-year-old colts ranging between a mile and a mile and three-eighths, all within uh, two days of each other. There's not enough. There's not enough of those of those those horses eligible for those races. There are always going to be small fields. And then they ran the st- the turf stakes. They had uh, at Colonial Downs the same horses would have been eligible for some of the races at Saratoga, but they picked the same day to run those races against each other. That's what makes no sense. Uh, what'd you think about uh, your excellent choice uh, going with Arthur's Ride to go wire to wire and win the Whitney Chad? That was Chad's pick. Great job. Yeah. Look, I, he's he, he's a nice horse, and and I got kind of talked off of making a bigger bet because uh, somebody that owns the sister to Arthur's Ride said, "I don't know why Bill Mott's running him. He got beat thirty lengths on a sloppy track. What's he doing?" Well, Bill Mott's a Hall of Famer. He knows exactly what he's doing, and the horse was ready to rock and roll. All right. So, uh, what's next for Arthur's Ride? Uh, right now, it looks like the Jockey Club Gold Cup, September first, I think. Uh, it's a it's a mile and a quarter. I don't think the added distance should be a problem for him. They'll face some new shooters in there. Um, but man, I mean, he's just he he's a nice nice horse, and he won a mile and a quarter on on the Belmont at Saratoga undercard in the allowance race. So I mean, the distance sh- certainly shouldn't be a problem for Arthur's ride. And look, he's not a, he's not an easy horse by any stretch of the imagination. He literally through jockey junior alvarado after the race was over and junior was able to that hold was amazing. on to i never saw that he was he ran like a uh, hundred yards with him that was amazing. yeah and junior said there's no way i'm letting this this horse go after he won this race and he was able to hold hold on but he's a he's a quirky he's a tricky tricky horse and bill mott does not get enough credit for what he's able to do over his career with every single type of horse that he's done. You know, people are, are, are noted as, you know, a sprint trainer or a distance trainer, a Philly trainer, turf trainer, Bill Mott's won with all of them. And he, he, he's won with them as soon as he started. And now you're, you're going to the, the latter part of his career while he's got his son training now. And he's still winning these grade ones with no problem. He won the sprint last year with elite power. He won the mile last year with, with Cody's wish. And now he's got this horse looking at the Breeders' Cup Classic. So, I mean, all all credit to, to Bill Mott and his team. He's got a great team of people that have been with him for uh, a long, long time. Long time assistants, um, foremen, grooms, hot walkers. Irma's been there since the start raising his kids. I mean, it's it's really a close knit operation, and and I don't I don't think really that Bill Mott gets the credit that he deserves because he's in a Hall of Famer, but he's never mentioned in the 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 pantheon of of kind of top top trainers of all time, and I really feel like he's just showing that he he needs to be um, certainly on that Mount Rushmore. Let alone uh, everyone wants to forget he trained Cigar, who had the record for the most wins uh, ever for a while, so you know in a row. So I, I just think that nobody should ever, ever sleep on Belmont. All right. So we are going to handicap two races today from Saratoga. 
This will be on, of course, Saturday's card, races 9 and 10. That is, that is a question, though. I, I would like to pose that question to our viewers, though. Who they would put on their Mount Rushmore for trainers, and would Bill Mount be on that Mount Rushmore? Because he's on my Mount Rushmore for sure. All right. How, oh, so there's – what is that, four? So what are your top four? I'd have to think about it, but I'm putting right. Bill Mott at four. Well, we'll we'll come up. We'll uh, we'll get uh, both John and Chad's Mount Rushmore of trainers. Uh, we'll give them a whole week to uh, uh, give us their picks, and then that'll be on next week's big show where we have bonus coverage. All right, so let's get to it. And uh, right now we are going to say goodbye just for a quick second to our YouTube viewers because we have race number nine that we're going to – uh, only be able to uh, break down for our Patreon members. And again, as you can see with the ticker up top, $5 a month, and then you get all these bonus races up until the fact that we get 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. And that's why if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. As soon as we get 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, all of these races are going to be available for free right here on YouTube. And we return from our Patreon uh, race number nine breakdown. Again, if you want to check that out, link in the description. Click it. $5 for uh, the month. Not just for this week. You get a whole month. And then if you want to cancel, you can cancel. All right. Let's uh, talk about the big race of the weekend. And this is race number 10 at Saratoga. This is the grade one Alabama stakes. A mile and a quarter. This should go off about a quarter to six on Saturday. Phillies, three-year-olds, just like the race we just did, race number nine. The morning line favored right now is Candied, just like race number nine. It's the seven horse. It's a Pletcher horse. Uh, and, uh, John, if you take a look at Candied here, a couple of starts at Saratoga, including last time out. That last time out was one of her best uh, numbers in 11. She ran an 11 also of October last year at Keeneland in that grade one win. So she's coming off an 11 in a second place uh, outing at Saratoga. Anyway, what do you think about Candide at 7 to 5? Well, she ran an 11 top as a two-year-old, which is a very good number. I played her all three of her races back this year, and uh, last time out she ran the 11, but she lost. So Listen, she's a she's good. Her line is strong, but at seven to five, I think there are other horses you may want to take a shot with at a price. Look, she ran second in Torpedo Anna last time. She's not in this race, so that's why she ends up seven to five. Top Fletcher knows how to win this race. He's won this race before, but I'm with you. I'm against this Billy. Okay. Uh, we'll start back at the top. Intricate, 6-1, to one, John. Gaffleone on board. Brandon Walsh is the trainer. And if you take a look early in her career, 21, 18, 14, 13. That's where she started. The 13 was the first race this year. The last three races have been 15, 13, and 14. So what about uh, Intricate? She's a little slow, but she has a shot to make a forward move. She's like other horses in the race. But again, this horse is six to one. I think at six to one, I would try to play against her. There's an old saying in horse racing. Old saying. I'm sure you've heard it. <laughs> I didn't go to the wedding. I'm not going to the funeral. Mm -hmm. And the saying was based on a horse paid a big number and you made a score. You don't bet the back next time. Well, I missed the wedding on this horse and I've attended four funerals. <laughs> I've been this horse every time in the last four starts. I'm done. If she wins, she gets remarried. Divorce fine. time. It's not with my money. I'm Chad's done. getting divorced. All right. The two is Chattelass, an eight to one shot coming off a 13 last time out. And that's uh, actually uh, what a. Well, actually, she ran a 14 uh, in her first start, which is pretty impressive. But she's back finally to a 13. Yeah, that race was at Indiana Downs. I don't like this horse here. Not, uh, you know, I know the Tories riding for Mark, Mark Ladd, who does a terrific job in California, but I think she's up against it here. I think there's some kind of a partnership with Mark Ladd and Grand Forster, because I saw Grand Forster at Saratoga the other day. I I think it's a, a little too far for her. She showed a lot of heart when she won that race last time. There was two or three horses that came to her. She fought back. She wanted to win. She won. It's a little bit of a taxing effort, and now you're asking her to go further and ship over to Saratoga. I think this is too much to ask. All right. Here's one of the top contenders, the three power squeeze. Uh, and uh, you can see by the sheet numbers, this horse is one of those up and downers. 
Uh, so her numbers keep going up and down and up and down, even though the last couple were just minute. But still, uh, it is uh, what it is, John. Uh, another horse that we've talked about, we usually find one every month or so uh, that has a little bit of inconsistencies. But still, the numbers are pretty good. She's got 211. She's got a grade two win. She's got a grade three win. She's also coming off a grade three win running a 13. Yeah, and she ran at Saratoga two starts back. But I don't like the fact that her last two races, she had those 11s to go back to. Only a 13 and 12 in her last two races. One of those races should have been the 11. And at 9-2, to two, I'm playing against this horse. Yeah, I'll, I'll use her in the number. She's a she's a closer, and she seems like she should be able to get a mile and a quarter. So uh, with more, many of these feelings, I'm not sure. So I'm going to use her. Okay, the four is just basking, a five to one shot coming off a 10. So that's a really strong number. That was a win. She's got two wins out of the last three, John. So what about just basking? I like this horse. This horse is fine. I mean, you know, the 12, she ran three starts back was a marathon distance. This is a mile and a quarter. So I know she'll be able to handle the distance. The race two starts back was not good. However, you're allowed to throw in a clunker every now and then. Then, So I'm reading at 12.10 with time off. The source is fine. Must use, in my opinion. It almost looks to me like this is the race they've been pointing to all year. Yeah. And, and I like a trainer with a plan. I think Ian Wilkes does a great job. He's won the Breeders' Cup Classic in a mile and a quarter. He's won the Kentucky Derby in a mile and a quarter. Look, he knows what he's doing. This is my top selection. His son-in-law, Chris Landeros, comes up to ride. Certainly a more than capable rider. She's, she's going to be my top pick at 5-1, to one, and I like this filly a lot. The 5 is America's Vow, a long shot that has improved in her last three, but those are pretty big numbers. 23, 17, 15 last time out in the win at Saratoga, John. Yeah, she's too slow, though, and she's coming off of Lasix as well. I don't like this Lasix. I don't know where that last race came from. I don't think it repeats that for a number. The six is Miss Justify. And uh, Miss Justify uh, is uh, an interesting contender here at six to one with Pratt on board, Pletcher training, one for one at Saratoga. That was the last race, her best race. She ran a 13. She's actually coming in back to back 13s, John. And she really, I mean, she got a 20, then two 16s and two 13s. So. I mean, I, I could see an 11. I, I'm not sure, you know, on this pattern, whether or not 11 will get it, will get it done. But uh, I think she's a contender. Absolutely. I agree with you. The horse has never done anything wrong. She's improved with each one of her starts. She has five starts, and each race is better than the previous one. Nothing wrong with this horse. Winner of the Wilton last year went on to win the Alabama and randomized. So it's obviously been a little bit of a key prep. It's opening day, and then you're stretching out from the mile. Uh, I didn't like this filly last time. She had front bandages, and Bill, I mean, Top Letter is not a guy that you normally see with front bandages. So I got off her when I saw her on the paddock, and she ran well. Uh, but now you look, she's only got one work since the last race. It looks like she worked with Candy. That they have the same time, same day, for the same trainer. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you can probably find that work on the XB TV uh, to see how they went. But I, I don't like that she only had the one work since the, since the race, especially wearing the front bandages. Maybe she's a nice horse, but maybe something's going on. So I, I'm just going to I'm gonna sit and watch on her. And then seven is uh, the favorite. We talked about Candide. Eight is Neon Icon, a 15-to-1 shot. Saez on board. She's improved all three of her races, but the numbers are big. 18, 16, and then 15 after back-to-back -back wins to start her career. Yeah, she's too far off. I mean, she would have to run an 11. I don't see an 11 coming. The, the chart made it sound like she had a lot of trouble. I watched the replay. She just wasn't good enough. She was flat, didn't show anything. Doesn't inspire me to want to run further or in a tougher field, so I'm off this one. All right, John, who are you going to go with? I'm going with the four just basking. I'll use the six and seven underneath. Four, six, four, seven, exact. Chad, you're going with the four as well. Yeah, I'm going to use the four. I'll use it uh, with... What was that horse I said before? Power Surge. Oh, power Surge. Yeah, Power Surge. And I mean, you use a little candy, but I'm not a big fan. So four over three. Three six. Three, three seven. seven. Three seven. So four yeah. over three seven, yeah. And I'm going to go six over three, four, and seven. So that's going to wrap it up. Next week is the big week where we are going to have the bonus races that we promised after not being able to uh, appear on last week's uh, show. 
course, all of the cancellations. That's why we didn't do the show. But Travers Week next week, you also have the Sword Dancer, the H. Allen Jerkins, the Ballerina, and the Four oh. So we have five <laughs> Grade One races to choose from. And uh, how many we'll be- will have more than six? <laughs> and we'll be are doing. We do- are we doing a live show? Uh, sure, I think we can. I mean, if we can put out, I mean, it's all depending, of course, on Chad's busy schedule. But if we can figure it out, uh, we will. And uh, if we so, look out for that. Uh, and as soon as we can figure that out, we will let you know. We'll, we'll post a message on Patreon. We'll post a message on Discord, and uh, hopefully, everybody will find us out. That's why you got to subscribe. You subscribe, and then you'll know that whenever we have a live show, Bing Bing, that notification bell will ring, and you'll know that. Hey, wait a second. Let me check out these guys. They're alive. I can interact with them. Guys, appreciate it. See you, Greg. Bye, Chad. Thanks, Chad. Thank you, guys. See you.